Imagine what it would be like to take a wrong turn in life and then end up becoming one of the most famous, iconic people in history. In history. Like every school book talked about how amazing you were. This is exactly what happened to someone in real life. And when you hear the story, it's not only going to surprise you, but it's also going to have you look at every quote unquote setback with a different perspective. We'll come back to this in just a second. Quick question. What motivates you? Are you one of those lucky people who wake up every day energized and ready to check every single box on your list? Or are you someone who's amazed that those people even exist? If you fall into that latter category, don't be too hard on yourself. Staying motivated even when you're working on something that you are passionate about, it can be difficult. When starting a new project or taking on a new task, it's pretty intimidating. So give yourself some grace. But before you get completely overwhelmed, I like for you to think about this. Sometimes all you really need is a push in the right direction. One tiny nudge, then you're one step closer to what you want. I will admit, sometimes these little nudges come out of nowhere and they blindside us. They feel more like roadblocks than they do easy hideways. There's a fine line between getting up and giving up. But that fine line is up to you. Did you hear that? The fine line between getting up and giving up, it's all up to you. But this story, this story I'm about to share, this story and how someone took what seemed like a setback and turned it into something that the world would forever talk about is so inspiring. I want you to realize that sometimes all you may need is a little push. I'm Chad Lawson, and let's calm it down in three, two, one. Michelangelo, you know, the artist, the sculptor, the poet, even. He didn't think of himself as much of a painter. He was a sculptor. The infamous statue of David, you may have seen it. Yes, that was him. Sculpting was his passion more than anything else. It's what he loved to put his hands to. In fact, his sculptures were so well known that he was commissioned by Pope Julius II to build his tomb, which was no easy task as the Pope wanted 40 statues in only five years. Now, a project as big as this was not without its drama. There was another architect at the time. His name was Donato Bramante. Bramante, who was very envious of Michelangelo, had his eye on Mick, and the tensions between the two artists had been building for quite some time. To be expected, these things happen. But Bramante, he was loved by the Pope. And he was able to talk the Pope out of hiring Michelangelo to build his tomb after Mick had already put in months and months of work. Let me recap just in case you get lost. The Pope hired Michelangelo. Bramante talked the Pope out of it. Are you still with me? Because here's where the shade really comes in. Bramante convinced the Pope to hire Michelangelo to instead, wait for it, paint the Sistine Chapel. You know, the famous fresco painting on the ceiling in the Vatican? Yes, that Sistine Chapel. This wasn't easy on Michelangelo, and even some historians called it one of the greatest disappointments he experienced in his career. He was a sculptor. Not a painter. If he failed to master the art of fresco painting, he'd be forever known as a failure. Imagine Michelangelo being known as a failure. A number of times, old Mick tried to avoid the Pope's request. But it's the Pope 
And how do you avoid the Pope? So eventually the Pope, well, you won out. And so Michelangelo had to begin, even though he knew the risk was enormous. Imagine disappointing the Pope. Now, I'm not telling you something that you don't know, how the outcome is just stunning. It is, by all definitions, a masterpiece. So, Michelangelo, he learned how to paint, and that was his revenge. Bramante's envy turned out to be encouragement for Michelangelo to discover a new passion. Now, not all of us have enemies like Bramante, who are actively trying to see our reputations go up in flames. At least, I hope that's not the case. But I'm sure you've met people who are less than supportive of your talents, of your passions, of your dreams, perhaps even of your family life. And that kind of judgment, it's painful especially since we can already be our own harshest critics as it is. And like Michelangelo doubted his skills, you've probably doubted your own abilities at times as well. But here's the thing. When you doubt yourself, you delay your dreams, not your failures. Did you hear that? Your doubts delay your dreams, not your failures. Imagine if Michelangelo had let his fear of failure get in the way of what he was asked to do. There would be no painting on the Sistine Chapel. Think of all the t-shirts with God and Adam touching fingers that would have never been made. Six million people. Six million people travel to the Sistine Chapel every year just to see this work. I mean, it's, it's immense. So I ask you again, imagine if Michelangelo had let his fear of failure get in the way. Now, let me ask you this. Why do you let your harshest critics hold you back when you can let them push you in the right direction? Sit with that a second. Your worst critic, the one that says you're never enough, you're, you're, you're too much of this, and you're not enough of that. Why do you let your harshest critics hold you back when you can let them push you in the right direction? Now, encouragement, it's, it's not always pretty, right? Bramante, as sabotaging as he was, he gave Michelangelo the nudge that he needed to create one of the most famous works of art of all time. Jealousy, envy, disappointment, anger, these can all be used as motivations for, for you to work towards your dreams, even if they are born out of ugly circumstances. Turn the perspective of how someone who is disappointed in you, encouraging you, to hold yourself to a higher standard, where someone who's envious of you might encourage you to fight harder for what you want. When you're faced with rejection or criticism or people who just don't like you, that doesn't mean that you just give up. That fine line between getting up and giving up, take the negative energy to move you from one side of that line to the other. I'm going to tell you something that is so completely counterintuitive that you're going to think I misspoke, but I haven't. It's just a point of view that we don't often consider. Are you ready? Aim for failure. I'll say it again. Aim for failure. The truth is, that failing is often the best way to learn to grow. When we take risk and go outside of our comfort zones, we have the chance to discover our true potential. It can be scary to put ourselves out there. It can also be exhilarating and empowering. What's more, 
Failing gives us the opportunity to learn from our mistakes and to become better, to become stronger versions of ourselves. Aim for failure. Take the risk. Try whatever it is that you are being placed into, regardless of your wanting to or not. Yes, you will have your share of Brahmantis in your life who will take the wind from your cells. Those people exist. But you can either allow yourself to feel lost in a sea of despair or go with the wind as it takes you somewhere you've never been before. Just keep in mind that although most of us know Michelangelo for the Sistine Chapel, he was already famous and he had a massive body of work. No one builds the Pope's tomb or sculpts the statue of David, let alone masters the art of fresco right off of the bat. It takes time. It takes years to create magnificence. Your first painting or your first knitted blanket, the, the book that you wanted to write, even your first homemade chocolate chip cookie most likely will not be your best. I am more than happy to judge the cookies if you like, but hear me, there's a lot of greatness in you that is sleeping, just waiting for the right opportunity to wake up. You have everything it takes. Your greatest accomplishments are just below the surface. Sometimes we just need a little nudge to begin. And other times that nudge really, really is more of a shove and you're just forced to adjust. For instance, a sudden job loss or the loss of a loved one. Times like these are so painful it can be hard to imagine anything good come from this. But dark times tend to force you to think more clearly about who you are and what are you wanting in life. Michelangelo, he was so terrified at the thought of having to paint the chapel that he fled the city multiple times. He was devastated. I mean, he, like, he was so nervous he lost the opportunity to sculpt the Pope's tomb. But it redirected his path. Otherwise, he would have never done it on his own. What I'm about to say is going to hit some of you hard, but in a good way. Maybe the real failure isn't in moving forward, but rather not getting past your limits. I'm going to say that again. Maybe the real failure isn't in moving forward, but rather not getting past your limits. The beauty of life lies with how you choose to move beyond your boundaries. There's an old saying that you should aim for success and expect failure. But what if, what if you flip that around? What if instead of aiming for success, you aimed for failure? I mean, after all, inspiration often comes from our limitations. By expanding our definition of failure, we can open ourselves up to the new possibilities and creativity. And who knows? Maybe sometimes failure is the best way to achieve success. Aim for failure. See what is underneath that you didn't even know is in you. To find more episodes of Comet Down, hear the musical playlist from today's episode, or simply wanting to know where to send chocolate chip cookies, visit cometdownpodcast.com. You're not alone. You are not alone. This podcast was written and produced by yours truly, Chad Lawson, composer, pianist, and nationally recognized Sweet Tooth. And now something my attorney wants me to say. The views, expressions, and techniques in this episode are of my personal opinion and 
is not intended to, nor should they serve as a substitute for medical advice or a diagnosis rendered to you by your individual doctor or other healthcare provider. Only a licensed physician should evaluate your situation, provide a diagnosis, or render other medical advice to you, and you should only act upon the advice of such physician. Now, what I'd like to say. I am an extreme empath by nature, but my profession is that of a composer and pianist, not a licensed therapist or physician. I hear from thousands of listeners how my music has helped them through various stages of emotional needs, and I simply want to offer this and future podcasts in aiding those needs. To find a list of licensed professionals in your area, please visit CalmItDownPodcast.com. And finally, if you've enjoyed today's episode, please leave a review. While it takes less than 60 seconds to do, its impact will last for years to come as every little bit helps in growing the awareness and the importance of emotional health. I'm Chad Lawson, and until next time, be kind to your mind, and join me next week as we calm it down.